Hey guys, welcome to Monocure 3D Pro Tips. My name is Charlie. Today I'm pretty excited. We've got the Anycubic Mono X version 2 right here. So let's check it out right now. If we do this right, we can lift this up and it should be perfect, which it is. So that's good. So the Mono X is a good printer and we've had them downstairs in the print lab for quite some time and we've been really happy with them. So we're really quite excited to see what they've done with the, with the version two. Now, I did hear rumors, and you know I don't like to research these too much before we open them, so they're a bit of a surprise for me as well, but that it was a plastic case. Those rumors, I hate to say, is true. Now, I don't always think that constantly attempting to bring the cost down of these printers is always the right way to go. But all in all, it's, it's a similar design. It's got this, uh, the venting through here. You can see it's got the, the Anycubic logo. It's got a slightly different tapering around here. Power cord on the side and the USB on the side. A nice beefy double X Z uh, rail there and the non-attached worm drive up the top there. Uh, this is a protective plate, which just obviously protects from dust and things falling in there. If you need to do any maintenance, that's easy enough to take off. Now they've got these plastic knobs still. Be interesting to see how long they last. We know the Anycubic have got this plastic that sort of deteriorates. Bit of aluminium on the bottom there and the standard hex head screws to get into that. I've got some sort of residue, which is interesting. It's a, it's a grease or an oil and I'm saying it's gonna be, maybe it's copped some heat. There's quite a bit of, uh, of this oil on the, on the uh, worm drive here. And that, that's perfectly fine. And maybe it's just got a bit hot at some point and you can see it there. I don't know if the camera can pick that up in the light. Look, it's not the end of the world. Nothing that a quick wipe won't fix up. So anyway, just have a quick look at the cover. They've got the bits and pieces in here. Uh, there's the vat. Well, that's good. They haven't gone with a plastic vat. We saw that on the Anycubic Ultra, the DLP. They brought it out with a plastic vat, obviously to save money again. Anycubic, if you're watching this, and if anyone's watching this who've got any contact with the guys at Anycubic, don't do plastic vats. They bend. Uh, aluminium's definitely the way to go. And that looks like a decent vat for that. So that's good. So this will be our, our little kit of dreams here. Everything you need, including the old USB, quality control pass, alcohol prep pad, dust absorber, which I've just gone and put dust on. Oh, that's just gonna be one for there. And the other one will be in there somewhere. Just standard scrapers and gloves and all that sort of stuff. Power, beefy power, power cord, Australian for us in Australia, which is always great to see. The masks for COVID and some filters. A nice other metal scraper, always handy to get prints off the build plate and a tapered edge. And here are your instructions. These are getting better, the instructions from Anycubic. There's a little bit of more information. So that is the screen protector that goes on. So this one here that's on there, that's just protecting it for travel. And then that comes off and then you put that one on and that's what all this is. And yeah, that's it. So then it's just the cover and the build plate. Could we like the checker plate here on the, on the build plate? It does seem to work very well for adhesion. Standard four hex head bolts here, but that's slightly different. Um, I've never seen that before. Anyway, slightly different way of doing it, but that's all pretty stock standard. And then we literally just have the old cover with no knob on it, but a little bit of protective. And obviously that just sits over the top like that. But interesting, they've gone with this sort of similar shaping that they've done uh, with their latest M3 printers. I'm very interested to see if they're allowed you to turn the power down on the LED screen like you can on the current Mono X, which we think is a great feature. So John, it's over to you. Thanks, Charlie. Well, I've had quite a bit of time with this printer and I've had some ups and downs. The downs, unfortunately, were pretty dramatic. The vat that it came with, for some bizarre reason, had a bit of a leak right around the um, the rim of that plate that locks the FEP sheet in place. And it was a very slow leak, but unfortunately it was not noticed in time to catch it. So as a result, what's happened is that the resin has gone into the guts of the LCD screen that the printer came with and pretty much destroyed it. So we've had to go hunting for a replacement LCD screen. It's such a new printer that we couldn't actually find one that was specifically for the X2. What we did find though is that the uh, Elegoo Satin S has exactly the same LCD screen. Unfortunately, when that arrived, we discovered it had a whopping great thick piece of glass bound or literally glued to the LCD screen. So the existing screen that's in here is not glued to any glass. 
it sits above a very thin piece of glass that's probably only about two or three mil thick. The new glass that came with the new screen for the Saturn S was about maybe four mil thick. So it would have sat too high in the bevel um, on the top plate here. So I went extreme. I took the whole printer apart, pulled the top metal off, took it home, put it in my CNC router and made that deeper. So it was just the right depth to be able to put the Saturn S LCD screen assembly straight into that and put it all back together again, put the tape around it, good as new. So I've been able to print since we had that mishap. So, you know, from the outside, I think the only difference you'll see is that the original tape will look different. So we've had to put brand new tape around the edge there. That's working fine. If anything, I would probably say the thicker glass that came with the satin S screen uh, reduces the um, amount of UV light that's coming through, which is a shame because it does mean I have to increase the exposure time of fraction. But generally what I was finding is that the exposure time that I was seeing on here is very similar to the original Mono X set to 65% UV power, which was really handy because this machine does not have a setting to change the UV power on the settings of the um, screen here. So normally I'd go into tools and I'd have like a settings button that I just click that icon there, it's not there. And I would be able to change the UV power, but you can't on this one. It's hard set to whatever it's set to on this machine. The other annoying thing, obviously, which Charlie pointed out when he was unboxing is they still use this rotten plastic, which falls apart. In fact, if you look closely, you'll see that this knob has already started falling apart under here. Not great, because that ends up with bits of sharp plastic that end up in the bottom of your vat, which could potentially puncture the bottom of the FEP sheet and cause all sorts of grief. Any cubic, please get on board. You've been told so many times, don't do this plastic for your knobs. All the other manufacturers somehow have found the right plastic. So please do your research, find a plastic that doesn't dissolve. Second gripe is they've shrunk the total Z height capable of printing bigger models like you would on the Mono X. The Mono X, I think is about 245. This one, I think only went to about 200. So you're losing a bit of height there, which is a shame because there's quite a few models that I've had to shrink down to actually fit that I'd normally be able to fit on the, uh, the Mono X. The positive is when I started printing on this thing, the first thing that struck me was the detail on the surface of the models. They looked so clean. That little bit of extra resolution, even though they're both 4K, this one is a slightly higher resolution 4K. This is the full true 4096 pixels wide. Whereas the Mono X, I think was like 3000 something or other. It's a little bit less, but you really notice it. The prints look super sharp. And because they've gone with a, a, a POM nut on the lead screw, that makes a massive difference to reduce any visible horizontal layer lines on the print. There was none at all on the print. It was perfect. I kind of wish that all the printers were using that particular type of nut rather than the standard default brass nut. That makes a big difference. Um, same size vat as the Mono X, so you can interchange the two. That's great. The fact that this bottom's plastic doesn't really matter much to me. It would to people who are a bit messy and tend to have their resin dribble down the side there. That tends to ease into the plastic and makes it look pretty ugly. The other thing we notice is there's a, a big bolt in a recessed hole at the back here of the plate. That seems to be roughly the same position as the old Mono X where the aerial used to sit for the Wi-Fi. So they probably had thoughts about a Wi-Fi module on the board inside here. Now, when I had it apart and pulling this top plate off, I could actually see a header that probably accepted a, a Wi-Fi module. So maybe down the track, these guys will have some sort of Wi-Fi module. Having said that, there was no real benefit in having Wi-Fi on the old Mono X, so it's probably no benefit on this one either. It prints really well, even after changing over to the Saturn S screen, which is exactly the same LCD screen. So happy that that was just straight cable. I didn't have to do any adapters, went straight in there. But having to put it into the CNC router, which people generally don't have a CNC router at home, so it's not really an option for them. Hopefully Anycubic will come out with replacement parts for this machine soon rather than later. Other downside, Chai Tea Box, not supported yet. As far as I checked last time, certainly not in Chai Tea Box Pro. Chai Tea Box Pro for some reason is a little bit behind the times as far as supporting printers at the moment. So they need to catch up there and sort out getting a newer version because I think we've been on version 1.2 for quite a while. So I've had to resort to, if you have a look over here, using 
any cubic photon workshop to do any slicing for this printer. Now, potentially, I don't really need to use the supports that are built into this software. I could go into Chai Tea Box, do the supports on there, export the fully supported STL out of Chai Tea Box and bring it in here and do it that way. But the supports in here actually have worked pretty well. So they've probably done a bit of research on what works for the support settings. What we might do right now is print Venom. So we have to slice it in this software, which is a lot slower than Chai Tea Box. So I'll go slice, go OK, and we'll output it directly to the USB stick. And you'll see that the extension format is PMX2. So that's a format, believe it or not, that's actually not supported by um, UV Tools, which is a third party program I use for making changes to slice files. So that hasn't been added yet. So away she goes. All right, it looks like our slice is finished and our file is sitting on the USB stick. So let's take it over and bung it in. First things first, let's get our deep black because we want Venom to be nice and black. Take it up to that max line at the back there. To print. Go searching for our lovely model is Venom. Go run. And away she goes. And there's our base that sticks onto the bill plate. So this print probably will take quite a bit of time. It says here 11 hours, but it might change over time down to about eight hours. So we'll let that run and we'll show you the results in a bit. Back to you, Charlie. Enjoy. Thanks, John. Well, there you have it, guys. The Mono X version two from Anycubic. All in all, it looks like a pretty solid little printer. We're gonna leave you today with a few prints that we printed on the Mono X2. Guys, as usual, please subscribe to the channel but most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing.